Hey guys, I'm Amber, this is Amber Online, and today we're going to be talking about Only Lovers Left Alive by Jim Jarmusch. Only Lovers Left Alive is a vampire love story starring Tilda Swinton and Tom Hiddleston, which I think are very good casts for vampires because they're both sort of tall, elegant people, particularly the vampires in this movie who are sophisticated, wise, hypercultured people. Vampires. Not people. Vampire people. I don't know. But anyways, the plot of the movie is essentially Tom Hiddleston is depressed, um, Tilda Swinton is his wife, they live in separate cities and like separate areas of the globe and she comes to be with him to lift him out of this depression then her younger sister shows up screws around um gets them in trouble by eating someone and then they have to leave detroit end up in tangiers out of resources and have to go 15th century style vampire and eat some people again just in order to survive packed into that plot is a lot of examination of culture and what it means to be a person and what is important about society and what is unimportant about society and what society has been reduced to. They use, Adam and Eve are used as excellent cultural critics because they've been alive for centuries, so they've been able to see wars and plagues and human triumphs and, and, the, and the renaissance and, and cultural uplifts and cultural downfalls and scientific uplifts and scientific downfalls, and they've sort of examined human beings throughout all this time as outsiders and as as people who have a greater understanding because they just have it seems an, not only somewhat supernatural vampire powers but also just greater education and greater access to being able to read all the books and speak all the language and having the luxury of time in order to accumulate all this knowledge so Eve herself seems more of the the book side of things the the cultural art side of things as far as all the books she's consumed and Adam is more of a, a music kind of person he he spends his time collecting antique instruments and is very obsessed with the past and how things were and how things were better then and also he's more scientifically minded that he's into Einstein's quantum entanglement theory he has built a device using Tesla's uh, Tesla's theories of, of electricity and he He's very disappointed in what people have done to great scientific minds and great artistic minds. And that's sort of where the film begins, that he's extremely depressed because of the way the world is. Eve has evolved and moved on, and she's an iPhone, and she lives in Tangiers, and she has sort of this more glamorous lifestyle that she's enjoying. And Adam lives as a recluse, and he doesn't go out, and he doesn't see people, and he only leaves to, to go and get blood from a local hospital. Um, and he has a gopher that sort of goes and does all of his interactions with the world that he made sign a confidentiality agreement. He has fans of his music that he's put out, but he doesn't want to meet any of them, and he doesn't want anybody to know about him. And he's just very, very removed from the world because he's so disappointed in what's become of it. And in fact, they refer to regular people as zombies, which is a, a clear indication that they think of regular people as mindless and as just consumers and, and as not really living their lives. So at the beginning of the film when Adam's in this depression he's actually suicidal and he has a wooden bullet commission because how else are you going to kill a vampire, right? The like stake through the heart, wooden bullet through the heart. My heart's over here. Sorry. So Tilda Swinton comes to be with him seeing that he's depressed when they're talking and once she's arrived they have this really romantic reunion and it's their husband and wife and it's really well shown that they're in love. So they've been together for centuries. They indicate at one point that they've had weddings several times. They've had marriages several times throughout history. But it's it's very clear they're in love and they have a lot of really tender scenes with them. But I think it's also interesting that once she discovers his wooden bullet and that he was suicidal, they sort of have one argument about it and then that aspect of his character goes away because other things are, are happening in the plot and they need to make way for them. So that, to me, was the most disappointing aspect of the movie, that I think they didn't maintain characterization of him because they had other other agendas to achieve in the film. Which is fine, because this film is more of a cultural criticism, I guess, than, than a story piece, as a lot of independent film is, which is, which is nice. And the fact that um, Adam refers to L.A. as the zombie central, that everyone there is just sort of not thinking, just consuming... And this, this film is, is metatextual in that way, that it's an independent film, it's not an L.A. big-budget film, and it is, it is not a, a zombie-central work, basically, because it's more reflective. 
Uh, the director indicated that he wanted to use Adam and Eve as vampires as a metaphor for the fragility of human life, because at this stage in the game, due to forensic science and due to advancements in policing and due to um, just just generally what we what we have as far as tracking murders, they can't just eat people anymore. Eve mentions at one point that it's not like the old days when you could just throw someone in the Thames with the other tubercular floaters, because people just don't die the way they used to, so they have to be much more careful. And not only do they have to be much more careful about where they get their blood because they, they don't want to be found out as murderers and hunted, but also they have to be much more careful about where they get their blood because of all the contamination now. Adam laments the fact that we've not only contaminated our water, but we've also contaminated our own blood. So we can assume then that, that means then, you know, bloodborne illnesses like HIV and hepatitis, drug contamination are in our blood, things that vampires get get sick from. They can't eat us anymore. Uh, in, in, with great abandon because it'll make them sick. So they have this this extra level of caution in, but they need the blood to survive. So they're very they're very fragile if their sources are come up, are cut off. And I think they do a good job in the film of building that sort of tension that they need the blood. That they the the methods through which they obtain the blood seem very steady because they don't want to make that the primary focus. That they just have to get the blood throughout all the film, but also that it's 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 a difficult thing and it's a it's a thing that is is essential to their life. So after they have this, this sort of romantic reunion, they're, they're chatting, they're talking about science and art and the way things used to be, and Adam points out that he has no heroes, even though Eve keeps insisting that he had heroes among scientists, among artists, um, that he used to, to appreciate these people and he's just forgotten how. And she actually has an interesting conversation with him about what it means to live a life. And she tells him that being a recluse is not is not living life, that he has to be kind and do good works and form friendships. And that's, I think, interesting, particularly coming from a typically considered monster character like a vampire, that she she tells him these virtuous things that make up living a life. And therefore, because we are zombies, it can be implied then that we're not really doing those virtuous things, we're not focusing on those, we're not pursuing those in our own lives, we're not thinking about art and culture and other people and being generous because we're too internally focused and we're just like sort of zombieing through. So they have these interesting discussions about life and art and science and culture and then they also have this, this sort of plot that's just in there where her, her younger sister shows up and her younger sister's been living in LA and she's a party girl and she shows up and she drinks all their blood and she's really reckless, and then she drinks his gopher, that's his link to the outside world that's been bringing him antique instruments, and she she ruins their lives in Detroit because they have to get out, because they're going to be found out as murderers once people realize that this guy is missing, and they throw her out, and she calls them snobs. And throughout the film, one could really say that they are characterized as snobbish, almost, that they're very, they're always saying the Latin names for all species that, that they encounter, even to people that may not necessarily understand them. Like, when he's requesting his wooden bullet, he gives the Latin names of all the different species of wood that could potentially be best for making a bullet to kill him. Um, they have an interesting sequence, actually, where Eve is in Adam's garden, and he's fixing his, his Tesla generator, and she sees these mushrooms that are there out of season. And she names them, and she's speaking to them, and she says, you shouldn't be here right now. And Adam just sort of dismisses it. He's like, they pop up, they go down, they go away, they come back. Like, whatever, it's not a big deal. And she says, you shouldn't be here right now, that this is not your time. And in a way, I think that's an indication of how, how Adam and Eve are in this period in time as well, that it's not their time right now. This is not an era of great cultural enlightenment or an era of great scientific thought, that all the people that had that were artists and that were cultured and that were scientists have sort of been put down by the mass media and people weren't interested in them. And in particular, there's this indication that the, the vampire characters, not just Adam and Eve, but also um, one of Eve's friends who ends up actually dying from bad blood at the end of the film, an older vampire, um, that they have contributed a great deal to art and culture via regular people because they can't do it directly because then people will get interested in them they'd investigated that they'd investigate them they'd find out they're vampires so they have to sort of stay under the radar and they just provide inspiration to other people like for instance the the older vampire wrote all the works of Shakespeare apparently and now he hates Shakespeare but he just wanted to get his work out there and this was the only way he could do it so there's this indication that that they're this deeply involved in culture and it's really sort of a, a fascinating film about being about 
art being out of place and out of time. And that's why I would say this this film is a cross between like Interview with the Vampire with its elegant vampires and their their emotional and and actual physical struggles to survive, but also um, the Midnight in Paris aspect of this obsession with the past and with um, with what was better about living in the past and living in the now. And I think that's that's a really interesting commentary, particularly coming from an independent film and when they call LA Zombie Central and they're talking about the fact that that this it was it was it was a non culture machine. And at one point also they're having a discussion about how Detroit's basically abandoned and it's like this this non city now and that all the buildings are abandoned and Eve says that it'll rise again because there's water here and when the cities in the south are burning people will be here in droves. And I think that's also sort of an eternal perspective thing that they have, or maybe not eternal, but just much longer term, that whether it's through supernatural means or whether it's just through detecting cultural patterns, they can tell that things will change and it's not it's not upsetting to them because so many things have changed so much. And to her in particular, she she has the ability to, to tell how things old how old things are through a touch and she just it seems more connected to the world and more out of time almost that all things are simultaneous to her in sort of a, a godlike way but also in a in an extremely fragile way that she's like childlike in all of a lot of the things she interacts with and there there are certain people they like and certain people they're impressed with so this film outside of its plot and their struggle to to sustain their own lives on blood and to avoid being caught and to to, to not be the monsters that they used to be and not follow the animal instincts that they used to because they can't do so any more conveniently is very much about celebrating art and science and how we need to be more receptive to it rather than rejecting it. And the great disappointment that Adam faces is he says they're afraid of their own imaginations and I'm so frustrated by it. To which Eve points out that he's also afraid and that's why he's suicidal. But the fact that he indicates that we're afraid of our own imaginations shows that we're afraid of great creativity, we're afraid of great scientific advancements, we're afraid of great change. And they, as outsiders to our culture, are not. And they are this, this greater ideal. So I've sort of been kind of rambling with this, but I think there's a lot of ideas really packed into this that are shown through Adam and Eve. But I think at its core, it was also a very sweet love story and a good vampire story. So I would, I would recommend seeing it if you like love stories, if you like vampire stories, but also enjoy unpacking it and seeing some of the cultural indicators that they have in here. And I've said culture way too many times, just like way too many times. So some of the social indicators that they have packed into here and just what does it mean that at the end of the film, I think I said this already, so it's not really spoiler. I spoiled it at the beginning. At the end of the film, that the fact that they, um, they're in a desperate situation and they just have to revert to being vampires and just like eating some people straight up without screening them for contamination without worrying about the consequences of it that if they want to survive they just they gotta eat some people they just eat this young couple who were making out in the park and they talk about how beautiful they are and how how like they he wants to bite the girl and she's gonna bite the guy and it's like I guess sexual in that way almost but just this idea that when it comes right down to it all their culture and all their sophistication and all their understanding and they're being elevated above us is forfeit if they gotta eat. Bye!